South Africa, a place of wonder, true beauty, and full of adventure. A place that I have only dreamed of going to since I was young, all thanks to the legacy my grandfather had left behind. The very people he connected with, the lives he touched, and the impact he made on the local communities will always be a part of his legacy. Our friends in South Africa haven't seen anyone from our family since he passed away in 2010. But that streak ends now, and a new legacy begins. I'm here to pick up where my grandfather left off. just ca arrived in Johannesburg about a couple hours ago. It's been a long couple days of driving and flying, but it's been nothing but amazing since we've landed. Um, so we've been welcomed here by the Afton Lodge, and this is a place that not only myself, brand new here, but to a few others in our group, but our family has definitely come here a few times and have absolutely loved it and talked nothing but highly of it. So it's been an honor to be able to be here today. Well, I'm Richard Lendrum, and I'm passionate about promoting hunting in Africa and five years ago managed to buy the Afton Safari Lodge. What we do is we offer clients a place to relax. We do meet and greet, gun permits, um, tours, local tours we organize around Johannesburg. And obviously I knew your granddad and many, many years ago when I started the magazine, he was one of the early guys that I met and he said, you've got to work with the guys at Afton. And when he started the One Shot Hunt mm -hmm. Club, I was very fond of him and have spent the last 20 odd years going across to the SCI show plus others and when we managed to buy it five years ago and take it over my dream was to make this a safari destination mm -hmm. to begin and end your hunt so that's really what my mission is here and it's perfect because I know hunters like myself who have traveled we spent we technically left Wednesday morning we traveled um, a couple of connection flights and then we traveled all night. So even think about, okay, now we're gonna hop in a car for another eight hours. This is a perfect place to just stop, regroup, recharge, shower, have an amazing meal and be able to be welcomed and kind of just have a great start to our trip. And like you said, and a great way to end it, so. And if you can acclimate, I love that American word. <laughs> <laughs> if you can acclimate and enjoy the fellow, fellowship and company of other people, what a pleasure. Okay, you're in the room. There's two rooms. Okay. Um, Kayla and Charles in one room, you in the other room, um, seven and eight. The staff at Afton Safari's Lodge was absolutely amazing. Our time there was beautiful. We connected with lots of new hunters that were coming into the area and people who were also first time comers, as well as people that have been there for many, many years. Um, help with. 
we had one last final push until our final destination. This was it. Two days of travel, hours on the plane, hours in the airport led us to this point. Everyone at Sandfield Safari gave us the warmest welcome, and it was absolutely surreal seeing some of the people that my grandfather had shared so many memories with for the very first time. I'm Jerry. Okay, I'm Jerry. Dave, pleased to meet you. Andre! Long time no see. Oh, yes. Twenty years or so. I know. Yeah, that's amazing. We was all going to see. That's fancy. Look at that. The world's finest honey nugget. Let's try it. Bug spray. Our own coffee? Winning. We don't have to walk all the way. We just need our own coffee in the morning. Where? We love it. Yeah. Lulu! Does she keep you guys in line? Does she keep you in line? You hear that, Lulu? I said, does Lulu control you guys or keep you in line? And she goes, oh yeah, she controls all of us. <laughs> so that's how it was for me for a while. And then some, like... So I was having problems because I'm like, it's I can see clear, but the lines are super blurry. Where oh, yeah. this is the first time I've looked through it and it's completely straight and I, it's not blurry. Is both of our shots oh. is exactly the same? Yeah, it's a lot. Okay. So I'm gonna get it you want to, try to zero it at 200. Then you will be fine. You're gonna shoot this much higher at a hundred. So just about three inches higher at a hundred. Okay. We can leave. Yeah. Just take the gun. Yeah. It's nice and cool Good. again. Okay. Okay. Perfect. The others will be glad to hear this. <laughs> well, you know, it's better to get it right. That's yeah. it. We got sighted in and enjoyed the evening knowing that tomorrow morning would be our first hunting outing of this amazing trip. My name is uh, Francois David. My family's been here 350 years plus. Uh, pioneers, hunters, started out working for the East India Company as a secretary for the governor and then became a, a hunter to provide meat for for the community and the, and the ships passing through to India. And well, I guess it's not a tradition, it's just the way, the way we are. The, the, uh, farming land, ranching the land, uh, living off the land, hunting is just you not know, something that we see as a, as a sport. Uh, it is just part of who we are and how we grew up. Thing as, as a way of life, as a, uh, a way of Paying for conservation is under threat, and it's and it's just every day there's something new. You have to control the numbers and and, the, and the, with the least impact, uh, and and that is where, where trophy hunting is just the most important tool in conservation in in Africa.
you can you can look at the areas where where he stopped hunting. Uh, the human animal conflict has become totally out of control. And as as a landowner and and, and a conservationist by art, uh, once once we started interfering with nature, you cannot sit back and say let let nature take its course now. You have to you have to continue interfering. Well. As, as little as possible, but you have to manage the, the number of animals. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for trophy hunters, there would be no wild. Life. There would be cattle and sheep running around here. Tradition and loyalty is, is, is quite important to me, and, and, and that's the one thing that I have to say about Victor is that those. I think those are the first values that that attracted us. Uh, the, the care, care for the people around you, care for the community, and and. Uh, tradition that, that Jessica and is, is, is uh, continuing and behind these trees. See that, see that? All those? I don't know what those are. Right? Straight. Do the right? Who is that? What are those? Springbuck? No, a bull. It looks like the one horn is broken. It's Pumba. After light breakfast, we set out on the road. We saw a few animals right away, but nothing that really got us excited to stalk until we spotted this herd of red hartebeest. Just want the blaze back to move away, and then we'll walk up and see. Okay. There's a good bull in there.
He think he said he was an alpha male. He thinks he's bigger than grandpa's. <laughs> started out this morning, um, we started with a list of animals that I had on my target list. We spotted this hartebeest group um, with some blesbuck, correct? Um, so we're trying to get the blesbuck to kind of spook out um, and kind of move along so that we can just kind of solidify um, and zone in on just those hartebeest. We got off the truck, we started walking, stalking up on them, and as we did, they started moving around. We kept having to kind of stalk after them for a little while, set up and posted a few times, um, kept chasing them around. It was a really nice herd of them. We found him, uh, Francois set me up. We put my rifle on him. We were able to use my uncle's amazing shooting sticks, the Alltrek engineered products. Um, so these are the brand new version. I was able to use my grandpa's rifle that he hunted here many times with, um, which was also very humbling um, and sharing this experience with everybody. But um, Francois had you know, coached me on where to shoot him. It was really hard with the tall grass. We're definitely not used to that back home. Um, so I targeted right behind that shoulder and um, we got him what looks like to be in the lungs. So it was a great shot. It was definitely very adrenaline pumped um, with lots and lots of uh, energy <laughs> put into that emotion. Um, and he probably went not even 40 yards, yeah, right? About 35, yards, yeah. about 35, 40 yards. It was perfect. So it was honestly the best setup, the best stock. Um, you know, it was great to kind of point these guys out and have a very successful first hunt. Well, congratulations. You did very well. Thank you. I appreciate that. I very much appreciate that. And he's a dandy. <laughs> he is. He's beautiful. He's beautiful. Out, yeah, I thought when they ran over the first time, I thought, well, let's try a little bit, then I spotted them again. This stock was perfect. I couldn't be more thrilled than to harvest my first South African animal with my grandfather's rifle. Red Heart Beast is officially checked off the list, but this list is long and contains more than just hunting animals. Things are heating up here in Southern Field Safaris, but the experience in South Africa has just begun. <laughs> I'm going to hug you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank well you so done. much. Oh, it was so fun. Oh, it was so fun. It was Perfect. an adrenaline packed. Oh, of course. It was good. Oh, lovely. Very nice. It was nice. It was good. fun for sure. I can Chasing imagine. after them. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. And they're just so intelligent. Yeah, they are. It was fun. How, anybody else back yet? No. Little oh. red hearted beast. Hearted beast. Yep. Oh, nice. 
staff. Isn't he pretty? Yeah. They're cute. They're little antennas. Yeah, little antennas. That's why I capability. Yeah. I'm sure you can I said this is that's why grandpa loved it so much. Keeps on going. Keeps on going until you get on the steps on the plane. Yeah. And yep. you go, wow, it's finally over. And you're going to get to watch a picture. Yeah. <laughs>